I want to talk today about the four foundations of mindfulness. And I really wanted to spend some time in January focusing on this. Um, first of all, because I said I would. And, and next, you know, when we were reading the story of the Buddha's enlightenment um, back at Rohatsu, which is the first week in December, really came to the time when the Buddha was enlightened. And the words that he said, with my concentrated mind, with my concentrated mind, I've seen clearly. So these words um, point to the importance of concentration. And sometimes in Zen practice, um, or maybe in all practice, we, you know, we come to practice through our own suffering, right? I mean, people come to practice for so many different reasons, but a, a very common one, probably the most common is our own suffering. So we come to practice through our own suffering and we start to practice and it's so different and so new and we feel good. And we're like, whoa, this is amazing. I want to feel good all the time. And we have this, you know, initial initial um, bump or this initial coasting time. And, and then we hit our first wall and we're like, whoa, I didn't sign up for this. Where's that initial feel good? Where, what's going on? I just want to feel good all the time. And so then we can kind of try to force our way through the practice and um, because we want to get to that place where there's no suffering. And so what a lot of people do is try to jump ahead a bit, <laughs> you know, just go ahead and skip over all the work and all the body stuff we're carrying and all of our life and get straight on over to enlightenment because there's this like a kind of a magical thinking quality. You know, we're just going to sit and yeah, there are going to be some hard times and going to be some good times and some great people, but I'm just going to, and then one day, bing, all my problems went away, everything's fixed, no more body pain, no more mental pain, it's all good. So I want to, um, I want us to back off from that idea. <laughs> it's, it's not accurate. You know, suffering is a part of our life. And what the practice has to offer us is, yeah, freedom from suffering, but it's not from freedom from, um, from the things that happen to us as humans. It's a freedom from the, the need to fix and the need to hold on to getting rid of it. So what we develop as we practice is an ease with what is, with whatever comes our way. And as humans, a whole lot of stuff comes our way. You know, I was really thinking of this today as so many people are um, sick this week. And it's frightening. And it feels bad. And our bodies, you know, the ones who are sick and those of us who aren't sick, um, maybe we're worried about people. So we just want to skip over that. Can't we just get to the place where there's no more sickness? And the thing is, we can't. But what we can do is offer our genuine heart of practice, and we can find the place where we can be in this body that we have for this lifetime. This body, the same body that I have right now, not somebody else's body, you know, not some Olympic, you know, runner's body. <laughs> Not this super tall, supermodel body, just our normal, regular bodies, whatever we have, whatever we came into this world with, whatever we ac accumulated on the way, you know, that time that we, um, you know, that we drove our bicycle too fast and crashed and broke our arm, that's part of our body now. 
that time, you know, when that period in our 30s when we just drank way too much and we kind of injured some of our body, that's part of our body now. That's what we have to work with. And you know what? It's fine. This is what we have. And we're going to show up with what we have together. Not trying to get something else and not trying to skip over the body. The thing about the body is that it holds so much information. In fact, it holds all of the information. Everything is in body. So trying to get past our body, it um, robs us of the most valuable learnings we can have. Body is the first foundation of mindfulness. In the Satipatthana Sutra, the Buddha taught the four foundations of mindfulness. In the discourse on arousing of mindfulness, mindfulness of body is the first one. And there's mindfulness of feelings. Mindfulness of mental states and mindfulness of dharma. Mindfulness of body runs through all Buddhist schools, comes to us from the yogic tradition that the Buddha practiced. So we have some common threads that we'll see across all of Buddhist teachings. And that's really, um, on one hand, fun and interesting. And on the other hand, you start reading the same thing over and over, no matter who you're going to read from. You know, today when I was pre preparing for the talk, I was looking at the Satipatthana Sutra itself and then some commentary on the sutra, which come to us from the Theravada tradition, in particular, um, somebody from Sri Lanka. And then I was like, wow, you know, this really reminds me of, of um, the Fukan Zazengi or Dogen Zenji's instructions for Zazen, which are from the Zen tradition. And I'm like, yeah, didn't Uchiyama Roshi have a really good commentary on, you know, how to arrange our bodies? Yeah. But you know what else? That's That reminds me that um, when I was studying the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama's commentary on the stages of meditation by Kumala Shila, then I was like, this sounds familiar. Same themes. Why is that familiar? It goes back to the Tendai school, which Dogen Zenji first trained in, and, and those connections across Asia. People were studying similar things, and it all starts with the breath. The breath is the core of the foundation of mindfulness, of body. The breath is the core of our life. The breath is with us no matter where we go, no matter what we do. The breath is always here. The breath is always here Therefore, we can practice wherever we are in whatever situation we are in, whether we are calm and peaceful and quiet or agitated or being yelled at. The breath is still here. If we can find it, remember our breath. Remember our breath. Even when we're angry, just taking a breath, returning to the breath, brings us back into our body, back into the experience of what's happening, rather than that need to get out of where we are. This experience of what's happening is the only true thing. This moment, this present moment. This is mindfulness in front. This is where the Buddha taught us to start, right here, in this moment. And the thing is, this is also where we finish and also what's in the middle because there is nothing other than this present moment. Mindfulness of breath 
In Zazen, we let our breath sink into our lower belly. We arrange our body in sitting and we let our breath settle. I'm going to read to you from the words of the Buddha. I think I shared this with you last week, but I want to repeat. Breath. Twenty years after the Buddha attained enlightenment, a senior monk by the name of Ananda became his personal attendant. One day, Ananda asked the Buddha, Venerable Sir, if people ask me whether you are still practicing meditation, what shall I tell them? And the Buddha replied, yes, he was still meditating. And what kind of meditation do you practice, Venerable Sir? Ananda asked. Mindfulness of breathing, the Buddha answered. Mindfulness of breathing. It's good enough for the Buddha. It's good enough for us, right? And remember, with my concentrated mind, with my concentrated mind. Breath focus teaches us concentration. Without concentration, we cannot wake up. We need an intention. And paired with that intention, we need a spaciousness. And this interplay between focus and acceptance, working together, concentration and insight, are like the front and back foot that enable us to walk together. Concentration, the practice of samadhi, and insight, vipassana. These things balance each other. If we only are focusing on concentration, concentration, we can become very, very, very narrow and hard. And if we're only focused on insight, just kind of sitting, you know, waiting for it to drop down from the sky for us, then we lose that um, intention and the motivation. So we, we have to find a balance here. So breathing is not um, an exercise that we do. And it's not a thing to get somewhere, but it's a point for us of concentration. It's a focal point that we have. And this point brings us fully into our practice of body. So we practice, we learn that body and breath really aren't separate. I mean, think about that for just a minute or try it. Is it absolutely at all possible to separate this breath that goes in from this body. Where do they separate? As soon as the air hits our lips and goes into our mouth and into our windpipe, into our lungs, it's part of us. We are not separate from breath. This Body and breath not separate is another way of bringing together the practice. Focusing on the breath, let the breath bring us fully into the body. And when we're in the body, again, we have so much information. I remember a teacher, Zinke, Zinke Blanche Hartman teaching me many years ago. She was talking about her cardiologist and um, she visited and he came to her room. He was really excited to see her and he was like, you know, um, Blanche, the last time you were here, I told you, you know, I'm so stressed and I don't know what to do. And I asked you, you know, you're a Zen priest. And she was. She was the abbess of the San Francisco Zen Center at the time. Um, I asked her, what should I do? And so Blanche said, 
You know, what you can do is focus on your breathing. You know, just really focus on that, especially the out breath as you walk. And then pay attention to the connection between the soles of your feet and the floor as you walk around. You know, I know you're busy, but if you can just bring that much mindfulness to, into your body, it'll make a difference. So on this day, when she came for her appointment and her, her cardiologist was so excited, he said, I, I've been doing that thing that you told me and it's changed my entire life. You know, just focusing on my feet, just focusing on my feet, my whole life is different. Amazing, huh? He didn't even remember to focus on his breath. <laughs> Just that little bit. And this is that initial bump I was talking about. Whoa, this is revolutionary. Our whole life has changed. We have to keep at it. We have to keep going. You know, we can't like want that, uh, that, um, you know, that yay, life is better. So just focusing on your feet for the rest of your life is enough. If we do it 100% in the present moment with full mindfulness, and that's hard. So fortunately, we have other aspects of the practice we can bring together. The Buddha taught four postures for practicing. And we do them all in Zen. Sitting, standing, walking, and lying down. In Zen, we tend to focus a lot on sitting practice. We, we spend a lot of time in sitting practice, and then we intersperse it with walking practice or keying. We bring the same practice to sitting in stillness as we do to walking. We bring the same mind to standing as we do to lying down. Lying down practice, we can become a little bit sleepy. So if we're able to sit, usually we do. But if you're not able to sit upright, or when do we all lie down every day? You know, when we're going to bed, that's a really great time to practice lying down practice as we fall asleep. Or if we can't sleep, another excellent opportunity to practice. It's lying, following your breath from your lower belly, focused, concentrated. In talking about sitting practice, I mentioned to you um, Dogen Zenji's Fukan Zazengi. For, za for Zazen, a quiet room is best. Eat and drink moderately. Give up all deluding relationships and set everything aside. Do not think of good or bad, right or wrong. Do not interfere with the workings of the mind. Do not try to control movements of your thoughts. Give up on the idea of becoming a Buddha. Zazen has nothing whatsoever to do with whether you are sitting upright or lying down. Usually, a thick square mat is placed upon the floor where you sit and a round cushion put on top of it. I'm going to skip over to Kamala Sheila. You should sit in the full lotus position or the half lotus position on a comfortable cushion. The eyes should not be too widely opened or too tightly closed. Let them focus on the tip of the nose. The body should not be bent forward or backward. Keep it straight and turn the attention inwards. The shoulders should rest in their natural position 
and the head should not lean back or forward or to either side. The nose should be in line with the navel. The teeth and lips should rest in their natural state with the tongue touching the upper palate, just behind your teeth, very lightly. Breathe very gently and softly without causing any noise, without laboring and without unevenness. Inhale and exhale naturally, slowly and unnoticeably. This is from Stages of Meditation by Kamala Sheila. And when I read this, I was like, that sounds exactly like Dogen Zinji. And so I wrote to my friend, Yuko, and um, she wrote back to me. And she was like, yeah, <laughs> because she studies early Buddhism in China. And she said, well, you know, Dogen Zinji was originally a Tendai monk. And in the Tendai school, there's um, uh, instructions for Zazen called the Tendai Shu Shikan. And this instructions for Zazen are very detailed instructions on how to practice. And so I was like, wow, that's really fun. And then, you know, going back a little bit, so that takes us back to the 6th century. Going back a little bit further to the time of the Buddha, we have almost the same instructions from the Buddha. Choose a place that's not too warm, not too cold. Quiet place is best if we have it. Sitting in stillness following the breath. Here are obikus, obiku or obikshuni, gone to the forest, to the foot of a tree, to an empty place, sits down, bends their legs crosswise on their lap, and keeps the body erect, arouses mindfulness in the object of meditation namely the breath, which is right in front of us. Mindful, we breathe in, and mindful, we breathe out. Thinking, I breathe in long when we're breathing in long, or I breathe out long when we breathe out long. Experiencing the whole body we breathe in. And this is how we train ourselves. Experiencing the whole body we breathe out. Calming the activity of the whole body we breathe in. Calming the activity of the body we breathe out. This is how we train ourselves. Thus, living, contemplating the body, internally, contemplating the body externally. We live both internally and externally. These are from the words of the Buddha. We see the same thread running through, so I cannot stress enough the importance of the breath and the body, the first foundation of mindfulness. And I know many of us have heard this so many times. Maybe it feels familiar. Maybe it feels rote. Maybe we think we know already. But in my own experience, at least, there's always more. And this is part of the beauty of this practice. There's always more. We can always learn and grow learning more from this that we have right here in front of us, our breath, which is our life, our body, not passing over, but really staying in.
Uchiyama Roshi starts off the same way. The meaning of Zazen must rest stably on the act of Zazen itself. So the question of how to do Zazen is essential. First of all, the room where you do Zazen should be as quiet as possible. It should be neither too light nor too dark, and it should be warm in winter and cool in summer. Care should be taken not to allow wind or smoke in the room, and the room itself should be kept neat and clean. In other words, try to create a settled and peaceful environment where you can continue to sit on a regular basis. Try to create a peaceful environment. We can do this anywhere, you know? We can do this at work. If we make our surroundings where we work calm, peaceful, in order, think of the difference when your desk is really neat versus a complete chaos. Think of the difference in your mind state. Even when we're working very actively, you know, if we're in a place like a hospital or a public setting where there are lots of people, even angry people around us, we make ourselves calm and peaceful. It ripples out. And we have an effect on those around us. So this is what I wanted to share today. Mindfulness of body as body is the very foundation of our practice, the core of all that we do. This is where we begin. This is where we will end. Beginning life with our first breath, ending life with our last. Thank you.